this is Clockwork McGrew. I'm narrating my first speed paint. So this might be awful, who knows. Um, I wasn't actually going to talk about the painting right now because it's sort of just blending and there's not a whole lot to talk about. Um, I start my skin tone palette with this thing from that I found on Tumblr that I think is fantastic. I'll link to it in the description. Um, but I don't like use it 100% if that makes sense. Probably does. I never think that makes sense, but apparently I do. Um, what the heck am I talking about? Who even knows? I'll get the hang of this eventually. Um, so like I said, I didn't think I would talk about the painting this time. I also don't know how I'm going to talk for 17 minutes. Oh goodness. Um, I guess I'll start out talking about the painting process. But my process is weird because I don't... I never understood that whole think about it as a 3D object for most of my drawing career. Probably because I was a little kid and I was like, oh I know everything obviously. We've all been there. Um, but when I got into 3D rendering, which I've forgotten how to do, which is really sad, um, I realized a whole lot about how 3D things work. Um, this is going to segue nicely into what I actually wanted to talk about. Um, so I learned in art class and in modeling 3D stuff how you make things look 3D. and. I always thought there was some other trick to it. Like, you can't just make it look 3D, you have to do some other secret thing that I didn't know about. And, like, not really. Like, I, where I'm going with this is texture, which will eventually go to style. God, I'm pausing so much, this is so awkward. Um, but this past fall, in fall 2015, for those of you watching from the future, um, I, I told my art teacher, I can't draw trees, I don't know how to do the texture. And he said, what do you mean? And I said, I can make it look round, but I can't make it look like a tree. And he seemed really kind of amused and confused by this, and he said, that's all you have to do. The, the paper and the canvas will do the rest for you. And that was kind of an aha moment, I guess. Oh god, I just looked at this drawing, I'm doing the lips. Ugh. I, I'm not really super happy with the face on this one. I think these are good lips considering the way I did it, which was just on the skin layer, which I don't normally do. Um, anyway, so texture. So I was like, I can't, I can't do this. And it turns out, really, for traditional art anyway, it's a little less straightforward with digital, but for traditional, you just have to make it look 3D. I think his, my professor's exact words were, the paper will do it for you. And that was such a light bulb moment, and now I don't feel awkward drawing trees anymore. Obviously with digital art it's a little bit different, but um, in, like in my watercolor class that I'm taking right now, it, there's no like how to draw a tree texture. It's just like here's how to make a line art. Well, not really a line art. A painting of a tree look nice. Um, and again, it's like the the paper and the shading kind of do it for you. Um, well, that doesn't segue at all into what else I want to talk about. Um. I guess we can just watch this for a while. The, uh, I guess I don't hate this version of the lips. When it started out, it's just a darker skin tone. I looked at that and I was like, oh god, what am I doing? This is bad. Um, sorry, you probably all just heard me crack my knuckles just now. Ah, it's so awkward. Um, also, the more I started looking at this face when it was all colored in, the, re the less I liked it, so bear with me. Hopefully by the time this is finished, 
we'll uh, have a better looking face here. Um, all right, I guess instead of trying to segue this, I'll just I'll just talk about what I want to talk about, and that is style. And before I did this video, I actually talked with the various artists in my family about this. And, like, I had a really interesting conversation with my father because I was going to talk about what I called the illusion of style, and that is when people, like, let's say, like, oh, I haven't found my style, and art professors I have always say your style is inbuilt. And my dad said, like, yeah, that's true, but you don't purely find it from within yourself. And that's very true, and I'm what I'm about to talk about, since this is what he brought up, I'm not talking about looking at other people for in inspiration. I'm talking about this idea that I encountered as a wee small artist, a little noob, online, that, also I'm still a noob by the way, um, but as like, like the first couple years that I was really serious about art, was this idea that in order to be a good artist, your art had to look almost exactly like someone else's who was already good. Like you had to have a Disney style or a certain mangaka's style or you know Miyazaki style in order to be good. You had to study them and copy everything they did and never ever incorporate your own vision into it. And if you did then obviously you were an idiot. And I hate this mentality. I hate it so much. It's so like toxic and it, it promotes this idea that your own touch isn't a valid thing in your own art. Ugh, voice crack, that was awkward. Um, and I just, I never thought that was true, and I had peers who totally thought it was true, and it was just bad. Like, like I always felt ashamed that my art wasn't obviously, you know, like, like another artist's, and it was only kind of recently that, like, I decided that didn't really matter. And so again, it's not looking to someone for inspiration, it's not going like, oh, how do the people at Disney draw eyes, because I mean, I, my art style got immediately better from watching several artists and their process and what they do. I'll put links in the description. But um, most recently would be Kiwi Bird. I love the way they render like skin tones and stuff. It was amazing to watch. Um, and there's a person on DeviantArt, I cannot pronounce their username for the life of me, but it has talks in it. It's, I'll, I'll link it. Um, and they said they were uh, really inspired by Disney. And for some reason, I had never computed that that was what I really, like, I always thought, like, Disney art was just cartoons. And then I started looking at it again after looking at this person's art and realized it's really not just cartoons. And a lot of it is really, really, like, fairly realistic. and. I realized that, like, there's a lot more, um, how do I describe this? Like, in anime, everything is very flat, and there's not a lot of wrinkles, like, on faces. So, um, and that was what I thought was interesting about this person's art. And when I realized they, they had been inspired by Disney, I went back and looked at some Disney stuff. And that's, so I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about inspiration. I'm talking about saying, like, we'll keep with the Disney example, saying, I will never be an artist until I can draw exactly like the people at Disney, and that's that's a mentality that bothers me. And so I wanted to talk about that because I was so like weighed down and guilt tripped by that from other people telling me that um, that I hadn't copied someone enough to be a good artist. And I just now that I'm farther along, no like art professor, anybody really, really talented that I've talked to has ever said that. They've said, sure, pull inspiration, but never, never abandon your own style for someone else's. 
And when I was a noob, that was the overwhelming mentality. Like, your own style doesn't exist. You have to, you know, be someone else. And that's just weird to me. But I believed it for so long. And I was so, like, I felt so pressured by it. And just, no, it's just kind of gross. Um, man, I've succeeded in not talking about this drawing at all. Um, so great. Um, yeah, style. And I was just, I've been just thinking about it a lot. Like, why, why did I waste so much time just being ashamed of how I, how I saw things? Because it wasn't enough, like, you know, insert artist name. And it just, like, it couldn't be good if it wasn't a direct copy of something. And, I mean, it's just, like, in retrospect, it's like, why did I let that bother me? Why was that important? But I guess it was important because people were saying it. Um, it's just weird. And so if people, if you're a new artist and people are telling you that you'll never be good unless you copy somebody else, don't, don't take it at their definition of that. It's, it's no one ever becomes phenomenal just by making art in a vacuum. You have to draw inspiration and, and see how other people do things and, but it's not, it's not, I'm going to copy this person's art and look, and have my art look like theirs. It's more like, I don't know, there's, there's an account I follow or I use on DeviantArt that had this quote that was like, that was Century Stock, I'll, um, I'll put them in the description too. It was, um, art is, I forget the exact wording, but it was like, art isn't a passive process. Like, if you're looking at someone's art, you have to be analyzing it. That's what, you know, being inspired is. It's not saying I'm going to copy that because I won't be an artist. It's saying, how did they do that? I think that's cool. And it's just a different different thing than I was taught, and I'm sure someone somewhere teaches that way from the get-go, but whoever they are, they're not where I am, and so I felt the need to, to say, your, your art is good, if, if it's your own style, if it's similar to someone else's style, that doesn't negate it either, um, just don't, don't listen to people that tell you that your art has no worth, you know, even if it's style or if it's, you know, quality in finger quotes, just don't listen to that, it's so, it's so toxic, and I listened to it, and it got me nothing, it got me, what, eight years of no progress, that was, that was gross, I mean, it's just, I feel like I should be wrapping this up, and I'm still rambling, so, that's my point. The artists I mentioned are really good. I will link them in the description if you want to check them out. Um, and yeah, thank you for watching. Um, I'll probably tell you more about this particular drawing on the next installment of this one, which will happen eventually. Um, oh man, we still got, we got what, two minutes? Ah, said goodbye too soon. Well. I guess I'll stop talking and you can appreciate my neurotic color blocking and shading. That's another thing. If you're going to make speed paints, I would advise, unless you're really good at color blocking, don't record that. I did and it was a mess. Um, so thanks again. Uh, thank you cool people who inspired me. If you're cool. Um, you'll probably never watch this, but hi if you do. I think you're great. Um, and to all of you out there, don't listen to those stupid toxic people that say you're worthless because you don't draw like so-and-so. Because that's just gross. Um, until next time, I'm Clockwork McGroom, rambling about random crap. Um, and thanks. <laughs>